Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate you to the next level in your life. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. You know, we started this series last week called Follow Me. That's what Jesus said. He, he approached uh, different disciples. Though we know he had 12 intimate disciples, but he really had 120 that were constantly with him all the time. But the call that Jesus makes in, in their era was a call to risk their own personal lives. Thank God that there was people that were willing to give their life in order for you and I to have the Bible today. Thank God that people were willing to sacrifice their family, their businesses, everything that they owned and had for the sake of getting the gospel to the future, which is us right now in 2017. That's not the kind of persecution that God is calling us to at this at this season, at this time right now. No one is having to be a martyr right now in America. The gospel is something that can be preached anywhere and everywhere right now freely. But there will come a time where it will be against the law to preach this gospel. It's in the Bible. If you read your Bible, you'll realize that there is a time where there will be a great falling away of not only Christians, but even people that are already far away from God. That even in the midst of the greatest turmoil and pain, that they will still curse God. There is a great falling that's going to take place. And so in this time, I want you to kind of, I want you to really ask God, God, give me new ears to hear today. Give me a new perspective because you know what? When you think about Peter, the one who was crucified upside down, this is the same Peter who was a coward. This is the same Peter who denied Christ. But this is also the same Peter who after being filled with the Holy Spirit became one of the greatest preachers of all time. In one meeting, he led 3,000 people to Jesus Christ. How did he do that? Well, Jesus said, follow me and I will what? Well, today I want to tell you that he says, follow me and I will build my church. Say, I'm the church. I'm the church. God's saying he's going to build you up. You see, as you follow Christ, he builds you up. As you follow Christ, he grows you up. As you stay committed to Jesus Christ, he will continually see you expand and invade and increase in every area of your life. The gospel is not just about what is God going to give me. The gospel is about what am I willing to give up in my life for the sake of others. That's the gospel. And so I want you today to use your imagination because many times we read the Bible, like the verse I'm about to read. And we start thinking, wow, what an encouraging message that the disciples gave us. But let me tell you something. I want you to do me a kind favor. I want you to listen to the verses today that I read as if you were living in Peter's time. I want you to think different today. Just say, man, I wonder what really took place in that time, which I'm going to explain to you what took place. But I want you to really sit in and engage and say, wow, what did this message that Peter was speaking uh, to, the, to the disciples, to those who claim to be followers of Jesus. And so here in this text that I'm about to read to you, Peter is speaking to faithful followers of Jesus who are saddened, who are oppressed, who are just at the very, uh, just at the, at basically at the, at the end of their wits. They're just, they're ready to throw in the towel. But Peter comes with a strong message. And so, please, as I read this today, don't let it be, uh, don't, don't you dare think that it's just a wimpy little scripture that's, that's trying to encourage you just to not quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Just, just keep going. You're going to be, no, this is not the message that Peter was speaking to the church. I'm going to show you today what the church looked like and what the church needs to look like today in our life. Are you ready? Let's go to 1 Peter. Look at this. Because it's interesting. Everyone wants to follow Jesus until you really have to follow him, huh? Check this out. 1 Peter 4.12 says this. This is Peter speaking to the church, to the believers. He says, dear friends, don't be surprised. I mean, right there, just that word. Don't be surprised. How many of us get surprised when things happen? He says, don't be surprised by the terrible things happening to you. If you're going through some terrible things right now in your life, if things are happening that aren't making you the greatest and most happiest person on earth, don't be surprised. Look, he says, the trouble that you are having has come to test you. So don't feel, let me say feel. Because you know what? All of us have feelings. They're a blessing. They're a gift from God. But so many times we, we dictate the life that we leave, live based on how we feel. Today, I feel like going to church. Next weekend, maybe not. 
you know, today I feel like being nice. Next week, I don't feel like it. And so he's saying stop being a feely kind of person because when you follow Christ, it's a, it's, a, it's a walk of faith. In other words, you can't go by everything you feel. As a matter of fact, you can't even trust your own feelings because your feelings will always lead you to the wrong places unless your feelings are in alignment with him because they're a gift from him. And so he says uh, the trouble that you are having has come to test you, so don't feel as if something strange we're happening to you. I mean, basically, Peter's saying to them, hey, listen, you faithful followers of Jesus Christ, don't think it's strange. Don't be surprised that you're going through all kinds of crazy trials right now in this time. I mean, he was basically telling them straight up in their face, hey, you're all going through stuff. Guess what? Don't be surprised. When you decided to follow Jesus Christ, it meant that you're willing to give your life for it. When you decided to follow Jesus Christ, it meant that you're not ashamed of the gospel. You're not ashamed to stand up and to stand up for Jesus. When you decided to follow Jesus Christ, you didn't just say a quick little prayer saying, Jesus, I received you in my heart, and, and you're my Lord, and you're my Savior. But is he really Lord for the rest of your life? It's follow me. Follow me. And so it's like, think about this. Let's just say, let's say I wanted to join the military. There's different branches, uh, Marines, Army, Navy, Air Force. Let's say I signed up because I wanted the benefits. You know what the benefits are of the military? You know, you get, uh, you get free education, right? You get to go to college, it gets paid for. You get housing. You get all kinds of cool stuff. And let's say I signed up because, man, I want to go to college. I want to finish my, 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 my degree, and, uh, and I want a free home. Praise God. But I signed up, and they're like, hey, so by the way, we're going to war. Whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't sign up for war. <laughs> or how about what if, what if there was a soldier that, man, he comes running to his commanding officer and says, commanding officer, commanding officer, oh, my God, they're shooting at me. They're shooting at me, and they're real bullets. That commanding officer is going to slap that guy upside his head and be like, dude, we're in war. You don't leave your line. You don't leave those that are fighting arm by arm with you. You fight. You, you continue to stand fast. You, you stay in your trench and you push forward. And I get it because you know what? Who wants an enemy? No one wakes up in the morning expecting to go through hell. No one wakes up in the morning, well, I just can't wait to go through, through trouble and trials and, 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 and all kinds of, you know, fun. I can't wait for someone to cut me off on the freeway. I can't wait to get in an argument with so-and-so. Nobody wakes up like that. Nobody has that expectation. But Peter's saying, hey, listen, expect it. Don't be surprised. Stop acting like everything that's happening to you is strange. Like, why are you getting all funky about the experience that you're going through right now? It's not a strange thing. It comes with following Jesus Christ. Now, now, please listen. I know that our persecution doesn't look like the persecution of this time. These people literally, literally gave their life for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today, that's not what the church in America uh, lives. It doesn't live that way. As a matter of fact, today in the church in America, the average Christian family goes to church only one time a month, one Sunday a month. These are new stats. And we're so caught up with programs. And, and listen, it's wonderful. We have great programs at Elevate Church. We have comfy seats. We have beautiful lights. We have beautiful buildings. And, and we have great worship. And we, we preach the message. And we're illustrate. That's great and everything. But that is not... The church, that is just something that we use to, to help you get a better understanding, to equip you, to empower you, to ignite you, to inspire you and say, hey, let's go follow Jesus and be the real deal. Right? Are you guys with me today? <laughs> Don't be surprised, he said. Don't think it's strange. You know, when I think about... Uh, before following Christ? Have you, ever, have you ever just thought about this? Before following Christ when you were living for yourself, can you remember like, like the devil wasn't really after you? 
But the moment you started following Jesus Christ and you decided to start serving and then people went cray cray on you, come on, you started tithing and giving and the next, you know, day or the next week you get a surprise bill in the mail and you're like, dang, if I would have just uh, not given that money to the church, I would have been able to just pay this bill. <clears throat> You see, I've been in ministry now for 20 years, and I have seen the most craziest things that Christians do. I have worked in ministry, and I have heard people call the office, and, and try, this is in every church, and Christians say, hey, listen, I'm leaving the church. I want you to give me all of my years tied back. <laughs> no, yes way. Oh, no, yes. Oh, no, yeah. Oh, yeah, or call back on Monday. Hey, can I get a refund? That's, listen, th that, that is the church of America. And it's not, and it's not right. At, at some point, we have to confront the reality of what the church looks like. And it doesn't have to be that way. You know what? It just takes one person to make a difference. It takes one person to say, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to look or, or blend with, with the crowd. I don't, I don't want to be the, the person that, that, that was left behind on the shore and just watched everyone else go out and do what God's called them to do. No, I'm going to be the church that Jesus said, and I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That means the more I follow Christ, yes, I'll have challenges. Yes, I'll have difficulties. Yes, I'm going to have some drama here and there in my life, but God is still building me up. And he will build you up and he'll make you strong so that you know how to endure the things that we experience in this life. You see, everyone wants to follow Jesus until they really have to follow him. That's the reality. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Show me one watered down Christian in the Bible. You can't find him. Not one woman who was, who was a coward. Not one man who was a coward. Not one Christian who was, who was trying, I mean, Christians were willing to, to hide disciples in their houses, knowing that if they were to hide anyone that was following Jesus, would not only be killed, but they would kill their entire family, including their children. We, ha we have to have a reality check today. The moment you start advancing the kingdom... That's when things start happening. And guess what? There is physical war, but then there's spiritual war. The spiritual war is the stuff that comes against you. There's an adversary, an enemy who comes and wants to mess you up. Nobody, listen, Satan doesn't care about you until he needs to care. What do I mean by that? Well, how many here when you were in elementary school, you played kickball? Let me see all my kickball lovers. Oh, man, I love kickball. Like, I didn't just want to be cool with kickball. I mean, I had to be cool at catching the ball that was kicked. If you can do both, you were the man or the woman. And so I always wanted to play outfield because, you know what, playing at the diamond is boring. And so I'd be outfield, and, and, of course, we know that when the really good kickers would come out, we'd be like, hey, man, everybody, get back, get back. And we'd go all the way to the back of the gate because we knew that that dude or that dude that can kick the ball like nobody's business, right? And we'd be all into like, yeah, ooh, I'm going to get this one. You're going down. And so I cared. I was engaged. But then, you know, you know, little Juan came over then. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, uh, and China. And, and, you know, when they came up, we all ran up to the diamond because we already knew it was going to happen. Like, all right, just throw it right here to me. And we would do this stuff. I remember being in kickball, and whenever those people would show up, I would just sit down in the outfield and be like, okay, let's see. All right, 20 feet the ball went. All right, you're out. All right, let's get back in. They're like, oh, everybody go back again. And so what am I saying? I'm saying this. You see, until you are ready to follow Christ with everything of yourself, only then you'll be a threat to him. But if you're just someone who just goes to church, sing songs, comes to church every so often, you kind of like, well, okay, you know, what's the church going to do for me now? You're not a threat. That's where Satan says to all this, hey, let's all sit down, man, they can do nothing. They're a joke. Oh, I know that's good. 
Oh, I know that's good. Thank you. It's real. It's real. It's, it, we want to be a real Christian. We want to be, we want the real deal, right? That's, I mean, if we're saying we're going to follow Christ, then let's, let's stop playing church and let's start being the church, right? And that's not easy when you have a target on your back. It's not easy when you go through stuff in life because the struggle is real. But God is much more real than my struggle. It's real. So I'm not here to, you know, downplay anybody's challenge right now. But here's the reality. You know, one of the things that, that Peter said is this. He's like, hey, listen, when you follow Jesus passionately, the war is on, but Jesus wins. The war is on. As a matter of fact, First Peter 4, he started talking about stop thinking it's strange. And, and, and then he says, stop being surprised. Like, you signed up for this. What, what are you saying? But then he encourages them again. And then on the very next chapter, 1 Peter 5, look at this on the screens. 1 Peter 5, he says in verse 8, he says, be sober. Everybody say, be sober. be sober. And that's the challenge because how many know that the greatest battle is in the mind? You know why? Because the devil will come and he will deceive you. He will lie to you. And sometimes he uses people to do that to you, right? But he's saying be sober, and it's hard to be sober, right, when you, when you, can, when you can genuinely say, you know what, you know, Pastor, I know I, I have been sober, I have been vigilant, and, and, you know, and I hear what Peter's saying. He's telling the church, your adversary, everybody say your adversary. Now, now he, he knows the enemy. He even, he even calls him out by his name, the devil. And I know that in churches, it's not a popular thing to preach on the devil because that's weird. Like, man, why, that's strange. No, it's an enemy. This is, I mean, if you read the same Bible I read, this is in the Bible. Peter is saying that the adversary, the devil, he walks about like a roaring lion. Like, not a lion. He's like one. In other words, he can only pretend to be something he's not. And so, yes, he, he looks like a lion. He roars like a lion. But he will gum you to death, right? <laughs> Seeking whom he may devour. Everybody say sober-minded. Sober it's hard to be sober-minded when you and I have experienced hurt. It's hard to be sober-minded when you've experienced pain, when people have betrayed you, when people have broken your heart, when people have lied about you, when people have lied to you. I get it. Have you noticed, and I'm going to be real with you, okay? Let's just be real. None of this washed out stuff. It, it almost seems like every year it's harder and harder for me to trust people. It's hard to find a faithful man or a faithful woman. Oh, pastor, you're supposed to trust everybody. No, you don't. No, no, listen. I, God called, he didn't say trust everybody with all your heart. No, he says love people with all your heart. I'll love you, but don't mean I have to trust you. I can only trust him because we've all been hurt and people have failed us, but so have you. I have failed people. And so what happens is this, is when we get back to that verse in 1 Peter chapter 4, and when he says, and know this, don't be surprised that these things are happening to you because they come to you to what? test you nobody likes tests but everybody wants an A <laughs> everyone wants progress but no one likes process everyone wants the blessing but not everyone wants the tithe 3% in America Christians tithe no wonder the church is so silent and so quiet. There's only a handful of churches that are making an impact literally like worldwide. And Elevate Church will be one of those. Amen. We're already doing it. We may be small, but we're hitting the world right now. Amen. You know, I'm already meeting with Congress people. Hey, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna put a dent. And guess what? I said we. The question is, what kind of church are you? So I get it. We get hurt. 
We get betrayed. We get lied to. People jack us up. People mess us up. And then you know what happens? Then we get hard. And so it reminds me of the story where Jesus is, is talking to the disciples. And he says, hey, listen, here's what happens. Uh, and he begins to talk about this test. And he says, you know what? Let's just put it this way. He says the test comes when, when, when life happens. And you remember he's, he gives the story of the, of, the, of, the, of the farmer who sowed the seed. And he said, and some fell by the wayside and, and then some fell uh, by, by the thorns and, and then some found on stony ground. And, and he says, and, and then when the wind came and when the waves came and when the challenges came, it says that all the stuff that came, uh, it, it literally choked the seed. And then nothing, it's kind of it's like this. You guys remember when you guys, and I'm sorry, I'm bringing you back to your elementary days. But do you guys remember when they used to tell you to come to bring your little beans to, to, to you know, to grow a little plant? Do you guys remember that? Let's put that video on real quick, guys, quickly. And uh, remember, it looked like this, right? And you'd bring your little beans, and every day they'd have you look at it, and you're just like, yay. And you would water your bean, and they would get a little bit of soil. Not too much soil, just a little bit of soil. Right, surface soil, so that there's something that can take root in the bean in order for there to be a nice, beautiful little plant, right? And then we'd get all excited and we'd take it home and we're excited for weeks, right? But unless you grab the little plant and begin to place it deep into soil, what will happen is this, is because of the surface soil there's not enough soil to nurture it to continually help it grow to the full potential that God created that being to grow into that is what Christianity looks like there is so much surface Christianity I'm saved I said the prayer I received Jesus I sing songs I go to church and it stops there there's nothing more that says in your life I am a true follower of Jesus Christ and so what happens is when we don't allow ourselves to go deep with Jesus we're surfaced and when stuff happens we 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 fall away we we shrink back and and then all of a sudden we're we're kind of making excuses of of why I'm not more passionate about the things of God think about it earth is short heaven is forever you might as well start getting a little bit more excited about Jesus the one that you'll spend the rest of your life with and really get to know him so that when you meet him you're gonna know who Jesus is and not shaking the hand of an angel But because you know him so well, you're going to know the moment you walk through those purely gates. You're going, to know, you're going to know exactly who Jesus is. Can we get an amen on that one or no? Amen. So he's saying be on the alert because the enemy right now is doing anything to distract you from following Jesus. Even I as a pastor have been distracted at times. Everyone here has been distracted at some time from following Jesus. I know that there are people here right now that they're, they're being distracted with doubts in your heart. You're doubting God. You know what the enemy does? He goes into your mind in the sense of like he plants seeds and lies in your head that tell you, is there really a God? <laughs> like where is your God in this situation? Like why, why isn't he answering your prayer? But when you're grounded and when you have Christ in you and you're truly following him, I'm telling you, when the test of time comes, when the winds blow, when, when the challenges and the difficulties come, you know what that test does? It tests you to see what's really inside of you. It's kind of like what my wife preached a couple Wednesdays ago. She brought a, um, she, she's doing a series called Just Do It. Nike didn't rip that. She didn't rip that from Nike. Nike ripped that off from God because that's what God says. Moses said, let's do this thing. And so she brought in a, uh, a uh, toothpaste tube. And, and she says, you know what? Uh, nothing's going to come out of this tube until someone finally squeezes it. You see, when you, when you go through test, it brings out what's really on the inside. And hopefully what's on the inside is a well of Jesus. And not an oh well. <laughs> or a whale. <laughs> And, and it, it makes total sense because, you know, here uh, Peter 
is saying to us over and over, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. Let me read you two stories real quickly. Is that okay? Can I read you two stories? Hey, by the way, last week I read out of Jesus Freaks. Remember the story? This, was, this is a book on martyrs, like true martyrs, real stories. And uh, this was my children's bedtime story since they were little tiny ones all the way to their teenage years. And I read them this every night on how to give your life for Jesus and die. And it was awesome. <laughs> so I bought 15 books. Uh, they're, they're in the... Uh, in the cafe, and you can buy them today if you want, and you can read those to your kids. I, know already, I already had some parents tell me that, hey, Pastor, I bought them, and it's the new bedtime story now, and the kids are going to love it, okay? Because real, real Christian is in here, okay? All right, so check this out. There's this professor, right? And uh, this is an old preaching professor used to take his students to the cemetery. How about that? Every semester, and standing on the a uh, perimeter overlooking scores of headstones, he would ask his students in all sincerity to speak over the graves and call the people from the ground to rise up and live. And with some embarrassment and an awkward chuckle or two, they would try. And of course, one by one, they would fail. The professor would then look at his students and remind them of a core truth in the gospel. People are spiritually dead. Just as those corpses in the cemetery were physically dead, and only words from God can bring them to spiritual life. And isn't that the truth? You see, the seed is God's word. The soil is your heart. And what happens is, is that our hearts become so hard because of the experiences we go through in life, the pains that our, our hearts become like sidewalks. The seed falls and they just fall over. There's nothing that can get inside. In other words, there's no penetration because of the, the rock, the cement. And what happens is this, and all over America, there are people that are sitting in church just like you are right now. And there are people that have a heart that is soft, ready, good soil for the word to go in and do something amazing. But then there's people in the church that have stony hearts. And it doesn't matter what I say in this church service every single week. When you have a hard heart, you're not going to receive anything. And so you're just shut off and it's kind of just like you just stare, you stare, you stare. And nothing's happening and you're wondering, well, this Christian thing doesn't work because I haven't changed. Well, it changes when you follow him. You follow him and then life begins to change. You follow him and then you know what? You don't look like you anymore. You look like him. You don't act like you anymore. You act like him. You think like him. You speak like him. You love like him. You're passionate like him. You're willing to give your life like him. You find purpose for your life like him. Let me give you another story. We're almost done. Did I wear you guys out? No. Okay, good. <clears throat> Look at this. You gotta, we get someone to play, please. The two Christian girls waited. This is uh, during the Red uh, Guard era, 1966. True story, okay, guys? It's called We Die With Gratitude. It says the two Christian girls waited in the Chinese prison yard for the announced execution. And a fellow prisoner who watched the scene from his prison cell described their faces as pale but beautiful beyond belief. Infinitely sad but sweet. Humanly speaking, they were fearful, but... Chu Chen Hisu and Ho Hisu Zhu had decided to submit to death without renouncing their faith. Flanked by renegade guards, the executioner came with a revolver in his hand. And it was their own pastor. He had been sentenced to die with the two girls, but as on so many other occasions in church history, the persecutors worked on him, tempting him, testing him. They promised to release him if he would shoot the girls. He accepted. The girls whispered to each other, then, then, then bowed respectfully before their pastor. And one of them said to the pastor, before you shoot us, we wish to thank you heartily for what you have meant to us. You baptized us. You taught us that the ways of eternal life. You gave us holy communion with the same hand in which you now hold the gun. You also taught us that Christians are sometimes weak and commit terrible sins, but they can be forgiven again. 
When you regret what you are about to do to us, do not despair like Judas, but repent like Peter. God bless you and remember that our last thought was not one of indignation against your failure. Everyone passes through hours of darkness. May God reward you for all the good you have done to us. We die with gratitude. They bowed again. The pastor heart was hardened and he shot the girls. Afterwards, he was shot by the communist. So many times we're willing to compromise something, but at the end, you still lose anyways. You might as well follow him. Listen, in the original version of, 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 the, of the scriptures of Peter, when he said, don't be surprised, and when he said, um, you know what, uh, he said surprise, and he said, and, and don't be, what's the other one? Y'all here? What is it? You guys, you guys even say that's exactly what I mean. Yeah. Don't be surprised and don't what? Don't think it's strange. Okay, so now let me give you the real description of this story. Peter was basically saying in the original version of this, he was saying, don't be surprised and don't think it's strange when you go through fiery trials. And, and here's the deal. In this era that Peter is speaking to the church was the era of the emperor named Nero. Nero was a wicked, wicked king and was constantly looking for those who proclaimed Jesus Christ. And he was so wicked in this era that he would literally light Christians on fire but use their bodies as human torches for his garden. And so they would light the bodies up and he would go and enjoy his garden as a human Christian was the torch for him to be able to see his beauty. You see, when Peter was speaking to the disciples, they were so scared. And they were just a little bit oppressed and feeling like, man, Peter, man, we've been faithful to God. And Peter said, hey, listen, don't think it's strange, man. Don't, don't, think, don't think that this is a surprise. Guys, remember that when we said we're going to follow Jesus, we're going to follow him. And we're going to bring this Bible to Elevate Church one day because someday there will be someone sitting in that church that has never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. Someday there will be someone who will honor us and will continue the legacy that we left them. And they will also in return preach this gospel so that in 2017 the people who are willing to follow him will now see people in 2017. 29 receiving Jesus and continually taking the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere and we will not stop. Listen, Peter was saying to his disciples, if we don't quit, we're going to win. We may not be able to see it right now, but our lives mean so much more to God when we're willing to follow him at all costs. And you know what they said? They said, let's do this. And they we're martyrs. We know Peter was hung upside down on a cross. The same man who told him, don't be surprised. Don't think it's strange. I'm sure inside the, the physical heart, there's fear. But no one's asking you to die. <laughs> Maybe your heart is so hard that the Bible doesn't even move you anymore. You hear a message, it's just like, I'm just doing this to be here for my wife or my husband. I'm just here because my family wanted me to be here. I mean, I know God. Today I want to introduce you to the real Jesus. Let me give you this last verse. And I want you to stand to your feet. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 26. I want us to pray. This is not just for anyone. This is for everyone. But look at this. In verse 26 to 27, this is what God is saying to us. I will give you a new heart. See, you don't have to be so worried about your current heart because God can give you a new one. Isn't that cool? 
He says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you the heart of what? Stone. And give you a heart of what? So that you can feel God again. Experience him again. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to what? Follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. And so what I want to do is I want us to all put our hand on our heart and let's pray this radical prayer today. All of us. Pray this when we say, Heavenly Father, I'm asking you to give me a new heart and a new spirit, a heart that loves you and a spirit that will fight for you. I'm in God's army. Jesus, give me a heart of love, to love you, God, to love people. Give me a heart to forgive my enemies. Give me a heart to share my faith. Give me a heart that is passionate about following you. Give me a heart that will obey you, God. When you tell me to go and love, I'll love. When you tell me to give, I'll give. When you tell me to serve, I will serve. At whatever cost. Create in me a clean heart, oh God, and a steadfast spirit that won't quit, that won't give up, that will be faithful, committed to following you, but also rescuing lives. And so, Jesus, I'll be committed to all you have for me. In Jesus' name. If today's message impacted you in any way and you would like to help us spread the gospel to others by giving a financial gift, please text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed as yours was today.